So I'm just going to really um, run through again the uh, what you know how we got on today, and uh, the fact that we scored a glorious victory. Um, okay, so hopefully the gremlins will stay away. But um, it was a fantastic day today. We, um, I, I just I don't want to be repeating myself, but I am just so incredibly grateful and proud of all those people who stood in the rain. We're all still soaked, I'm sure, um, but it was well worth it. It was just super. And I mean, it is, as I said earlier, shocking that we've been forced to do this, um, to go to the Department of Justice to demand that our free speech is not taken from us, nor will it be under any circumstances, because I certainly will not be respecting any law that tries to take away what I want to say about what I believe we need to do as a country, and that is to make sure that we consign Fianna Fáil, Fianna Gael and their communist opposition to the political dustbin. Um, I'm going to keep repeating that. It's a mantra and I will also keep repeating everything that I have been saying about open borders, the destruction of our national sovereignty, the destruction of our cultural identity, of our heritage, the fact that our homeless, the Irish people, uh, seem to be treated as second class citizens when it comes to uh, visitors to our country from uh, the other side of the world. Insanity. Insanity. And it's only when you spend a little bit of time in you know the city centre on a Friday night and you know the lashing rain and people dashing off to restaurants and um, you know and that's all great you know life I suppose will continue but uh, and should continue but of course many of these people are so distracted and caught up that they don't see the people that they're stepping over as they go out to their expensive restaurants and They've become dehumanized in many ways. But tonight, um, you know, as I was saying earlier, we spoke to this lovely man on our way back to the car and a really talented tradesman, quite clearly um, under no uh, influence of alcohol or drugs and uh, too frightened to go to hostels. This is the story they tell time and time again. We started off the day meeting a group of men um, in the Liberties who live in the Phoenix Park. Incredible, how sad. Uh, Irish men, four Irish men that could be contributing so much to our country, to their country, um, but their modus operandi is all about survival and surviving out in the, the freezing cold. Um, and I have to hand it to them, you know, they all, they've chosen and, you know, some some of the people, the homeless people that we spoke to today showed us their scars. The last guy that we spoke to, you know, he had a scar here where he had been assaulted in a hostel and that's why he's not going back. Um, but these men, um, despite everything, the hardship that they're going through, they do not want any sympathy at all and uh, they're just... It's just so outrageous and wrong. It's so wrong. And we need direct provision for these people. We do. Um, but the taxpayer will not be paying for it. It will be coming out of the pensions that are going to be stripped from the traitors and criminals who have brought this housing crisis about. This manufactured, orchestrated housing crisis and it is we know that at least one in three of the social housing available one in three units is going to a non-national this is treason this is treason these people who tonight and we must remember them tonight as we sit in the comfort of our warm homes safe we must remember our brothers and sisters who are out on the streets tonight and we would all love to help them. And it breaks our heart to have to say goodbye when we sit and talk to them and leave them there. Leave them there. You just need to go down Grafton Street tonight. And they're all bedding down now for the night. This is what this has come to. I was talking to Great Patriot this evening and we were saying how, you know, those 
traitors can lie and lie and lie and say there was always homelessness, but there wasn't. When I was growing up in the 70s and 80s, there wasn't. Now they can say, oh yes there was. We were talking about how, you know, in the part of Dublin I grew up in, there was one guy that we knew, he was called Forty Coats, and everyone knew that, you know, he was the man that chose to live out on the streets. That was his decision. I think everyone probably had one of those. Uh, and he probably didn't even live on the streets, but everyone kept an eye out for him and he was grand, he was happy enough. But, you know, this is all new. This and the tragedy again that so many of our young people are growing up and thinking this is normal because they know that they're never going to own a house if we continue to vote these criminals back into power. They're never going to own anything of any value. Um, it's all being orchestrated. It's being done by design. 80% of the purpose-built student accommodation in Dublin is going to people from outside the state. Now, the great thing is that so many people now are able to say this, they're not frightened about talking about this and they are shaking their heads and saying no more, no more. And as I keep saying, we are coming together now. This patriot movement is growing and it's strong. And that's what sickens these uh, goons that were there today. And you know, you just look at them and we pity them. We have to pray that one day they will wake up and They've probably been MK Ultra. They've been programmed. I mean, I, I, I really, I was so happy at the turnout today, and I was so delighted that, um, you know, the sight of all the tricolors that people are really um, asserting the right, our right to fly that flag higher than any other flag. But I was talking about Antifa, and I was saying that. Um, you know, they, not too many of them showed up today, but they were there in their black hoodies and black masks and they just look so, so incredibly sinister.